Hi friends and welcome to 2022. I'm so happy that you are here. We made it. So I took a break during the Christmas holiday. I took two weeks off where I didn't post any content, make any content. And so during that time, I really reflected on the fact that I deserve an easy life and so do you. And it's easier to have an easy life than to have a life full of hustling, grinding. And so, so new year resolutions come around every single year and people figure out a way to make life harder for themselves. They make life harder for themselves. They want to improve who they are. They don't think that they're enough. They're coming from a place of scarcity and lack and not from a place of love and kindness and gentleness with themselves. And so I realized that I was doing that myself and I realized that I didn't want to do that anymore. So I opted out. I opted out of making new year resolutions. And instead, I just want to go into the new year with intentions on what I want to feel, what I want to experience and what I want to see in my life to thrive. I reflected, I recharged, I refocused, and I realized that I want an easy life. And I know for some people that might be triggering because we're always told that we have to work twice as hard to get half as far, or you know, we have to grind it out and hustle it out until we reach a point where we can rest, where we can play and enjoy our life. And so I reject all of that, right? And so I made a video a while ago about how hustle culture is not for black women. And I got some pushback. Most people agreed with me and felt me on that thing, but I got some pushback. And somebody was saying that the term hustle and grind is really just a colloquial term, meaning, you know, focus on the goal and pursue it until you reach the point of success, whatever that means for you. And so I can kind of understand that because language changes depending on what culture you're in, who you're talking to, but we really have to look at the real definition of the word, right? So I have the real definition of hustle. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Hustle. Force someone to move hurriedly or unceremoniously in a specific direction. Pay attention to these definitions. Obtain by forceful action or persuasion. Busy movement and activity. A fraud or a swindle, like when you hustle somebody out of some money, like, you know, car dealers on the street. And I also think about hustling in sports. When you play sports, you know, you're like, oh, hustle, hustle it out, right? You're, you're sprinting towards, you know, the, the basket or to the ball or wherever you're chasing. And so, you know, short term, it makes sense to hustle towards the ball, but long term, it is not a strategy. And my husband actually had an example of this and how he and his father might play basketball together. And while my husband might have more stamina than his father, his father has more uh, intentions, right, when he plays. So he might not have the energy, but he has the better... Uh, intentions to be able to achieve the goal. So you could be running around in circles, but missing all the shots. And so what is the point if you're just hustling, but you have no, no strategy, but with the right strategy, you can conserve energy. And so then you can play well, <laughs> play these sports well. So you're not overdoing it. You're not, you know, exhausting yourself with no goals, with no success. All right. So now we got to look at the word grind. Y'all ready? Grind. Reduce something to small particles or powder by crushing it. <laughs> rub, and you know how many people be like, crush it, go for it. Shout out to Gary Vee. Um, rub or cause to rub together gratingly. So this is not pleasant. This is not gentle. This is not something that feels good. When you grind something, it is painful. It is ripping something apart, right? It says a crushing or grating sound or motion or hard, dull work, right? And so these definitions don't sound like anything I want to be a part of. I don't want to have anything to do with hustling and grinding anymore, right? I deserve ease and so do you. So I've been getting myself together for the new year and I'm trying to put together things in words and I have a deck of cards. Actually, let me show you. Let me show you the deck of cards. So I carry around these cards with me always, right? And so my goal is to read these cards every single morning. And so I'll show you more about this later, but I got this from another YouTuber. So instead of making a vision board, I carry around post-it cards to remind myself of what my intentions are for the year, right? And so, of course, the first card says, new day, new mercies, salah, right? And one of the things that I wrote down was, I wanna prioritize flow over force, flow over force. And what I really realized is that last year, after reflecting on last year, the thing that required the least amount of effort resulted in the biggest reward for me. Like it was the biggest payout. And it was something that I, I was in a commercial and I sung a song and this is a cover of a song that I just want to do for fun. And somebody found the song by themselves and said, hey, we want to put you in a commercial. That was a song that I did like a few years ago. I couldn't have planned that, but everything else that I was trying to force to make happen last year did not work out. I was really frustrated. I was so confused because I was putting in all this work and they say that if you put in work and effort, then things come to pass. And what I realized and what I've always known is that hard work does not always pay off. Like I said before, we could look at our ancestors, right? They worked hard and they have little to nothing to show for it. And it's really because the systems are set up for them to lose. 
So hard work does not always yield great results. And if that's the case, I need to work smarter, not harder. So some things that I'm prioritizing this year, flow over force, connection over competition. So I wanna build community, not compete with other people. In this hustle and grind culture, it tells you that there can only be one winner. There can only be one person who thrives. And I rebuke that, I, I push that away. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that we can all thrive if we really focus on community and building one another up. And I'm also prioritizing resting over hustling. So Stephanie Perry did a video a little while ago about ease and how black women need to, um, need to accept more ease in their life. And I totally agree. And one thing that I learned over the pandemic is that grocery stores stress me out. I always knew this, right? I always knew that I hated grocery shopping, but I felt like I had to do it. And so I would go grocery shopping. All my energy would be zapped for me. I didn't want to do it anymore. And during the pandemic, because of COVID-19, I decided to try um, food delivery services. And, you know, this is something I said to myself, like, oh, only rich white people do that. That's a very, you know, I almost felt guilty for using it. But once I used it, I was like, you know what, this makes my life a whole lot better. I don't have to go up and down the aisles, maneuver around people, have people hit me with their carts and sit in lines and wait for the, I'm over it, right? <laughs> like I can just order my groceries and somebody can do that work for me and they get paid to do that work. So it's a win-win situation. And so I realized that I am making things harder for myself than it has to be. I have always done this, right? Because it's something that I've been taught that I had to do. If it's not hard, it doesn't count, right? If it's not difficult, then you're not worthy of being praised. Look at all the lists about, you know, people overcoming obstacles. These are the people who black folks usually are highlighted. People who overcame adversity, people who came out the hood and became rich, you know, people who overcame, like, escaped slavery, things like this. Like, we're used to being celebrated for overcoming, right? For overcoming, but not really thriving. We're not really celebrated for thriving. And I really feel like I want to move past that, right? We've been here 400 plus years, and all we've been celebrated for is thriving. And really, it's like, is that we've been celebrated for is surviving, I should say, not thriving. And so my, my question is, you know, is that something to be celebrated or is that a trauma response? You know, people say, you're so resilient, you're so strong. I don't wanna be those things anymore. I talked about that a little bit in the live that I did about setting goals about 2022. You can watch that here. But I want to live a life of joy. I want joy above everything else. And I don't wanna be celebrated for just making it. I want to thrive and I wanna create a community of black women who are thriving, not just surviving. And so if I have to, do, if I wanna do that, I have to start with myself and I have to look at everything that I'm doing to make myself, to make things harder for myself and make it easier. What was even crazier is that during my break, it was really hard for me to, to be present. Even though I was with my family and friends and just hanging out and at the beach, there was still a little buzz, a little nagging feeling in the back of my head saying, you need to be working, you need to be doing. While you're not doing, somebody else is doing, right? That competitive, that competitive mindset or scarcity mindset, right? It's this idea that, oh, if you don't post, people are gonna forget about you. What about the new subscribers you have? Blah, 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 blah. All those things were nagging at me while I was resting and I realized I need to be more intentional about resting, not just on vacation, but in my everyday life. So not overdoing it, taking my time, living slow. These are things that I really want to enjoy in 2022. And I realized even during this week recording this video, I'm still not posting anything and I'm taking my time, even with my videos, right? Having a script in front of me. So I'm not like, oh, did I forget everything? Like not worrying about the optics of it, but really the depth and the message of what I'm doing. And I want that to really resonate with people more than the way that it looks, than the way that it is, you know, boxed up, right? I want people to actually get something from what I'm saying. Even during the holiday season, it's really busy. It's really overwhelming. We're spending money we don't have. We're spending time and we're exhausted by January and then we have to go right back to work, right? So it's really not a rest. It's really about grinding and hustling even for family and friends or to prove your love for somebody or to earn love. And I opted out this year. I literally on Christmas day sat on the beach with my mother and husband, watching the waves, waiting in the water, doing not much of anything. And it was great, it was fantastic. I got to see my grandmother um, in Florida and you know, though I wanted to spend more time with her, it was really refreshing not to have to perform during Christmas, not to have to overdo during Christmas. Not that my grandmother makes me, makes me overdue, but sometimes when you're around family, it can be very overwhelming because you're trying to pack a year's worth of experiences and conversation, you're catching up, but just sitting in silence and just watching the waves was something that was really something that I needed. We were on vacation for about two weeks. And so at the beginning, like I said, I was worried about not doing. By the end of vacation, I was present. I was happy to not be doing anything. And it really made me realize why I make things harder for myself. It's because I feel like, again, I've been taught that if it's not hard, it doesn't count. I've been taught to earn love, earn respect, earn 
rest and all those things I have to throw away if I want to thrive in the new year. I decided to give myself that grind and hustle culture could never give me joy, peace, rest, right? Being present because in hustling and grinding, if you're hustling and moving constantly, you're taking no time to really enjoy the life that you've been given. You're really fumbling your life. You're being careless with your life, reckless with your life. When you're hustling, you're not being careful with the steps that you take, with the words that you speak. You're trying to get the job done. And in getting the job done, there are people who are hurting, people who are missing out on you, people who are losing you on the way to that goal, to that vision of success that you have for yourself. Some really hard truths that I had to face was that, you know, I feel like I have to have everything together all the time. And it is not something to be praised. Being resilient is not something to be praised. Being overwhelmed and stressed out all the time is something that black women are often praised for. But it's really, again, a trauma response because who else is going to do it, right? So the reason why I was doing so much is because I felt like everything was weighing on me. Everything came down to me making the right decisions to, you know, taking the right directions, you know, making the best of, you know, scraps. And I realized that I was being my own worst enemy. I was not being my friend. Another thing that I realized is that I feel like I have to give everything of myself to be valuable in order to sell something or as an entrepreneur or to sell music as an artist for people to sign up for my Patreon. I asked people to sign on my Patreon and people said they just want to support me. And I could not fathom that because I felt like I had to give them, you know, three new songs every week and go live every month and do all these things that would exhaust me, right? But people just said that they just wanted to support me. And I never knew a world like that could exist where people just want to support you just because they're being altruistic, because they're just being kind and supportive and they really believe in what you're doing. And so instead of pushing that away and be like, no, 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 no. But in for your money, I have to give you, you know, three extra things. I'm going to learn to accept those things. I'm going to learn to accept the support and accept the, the idea and the fact that somebody could just want to support you just because they like you, just because they believe in what you're doing. Even when I was taking photography clients, I felt like if I'm charging $500 for a photo shoot, I need to give them a thousand photos that they're not even going to use. And what I realized that when people value you, they value what you do and they're willing to pay you what they have. And even if they can't afford it, they're not going to knock you down. They're going to push you to somebody else who can afford it. And so I'm learning to take that in with everything in my life. I don't have to give all of myself to be valuable or worthy. I am inherently worthy. And if that is the truth, then what actions do I need to take to change the situations I put myself in to make life harder for me? Believing that ease or having an easy life is a bad thing leads to so many horrible things in your life, right? It makes you stay longer than you should, put up with more than you should, right? It makes you question your own value, your own worth. It makes you put yourself in situations that you would never put a friend in because you feel like, oh, you know, in order for this person to love me, I have to let them, I have to let them abuse me. I have to let them use me. I have to give everything I have. And that's not what love is in the first place. We take on more than we can handle. And then we're in the cycle of burnout all over again to heal for like two weeks and go right back into burning ourselves out because we believe that is normal. We believe that life has to be hard. And I don't think life has to be that hard. Life has hard parts, right? Like life has things that happen to us unwillingly, things that we could never fathom. You know, we might get sick or we might lose a loved one. Things happen in our daily lives. We might pop a tire, right? Things are just frustrating. But we don't have to add to that list by making our lives harder. We can actually add joy, be intentional about that thing, and lead a life that, again, brings more ease and happiness. And the only people who benefit from you not leading an easy life are corporations and people who use and abuse you. And why would you want to give them that much power? Why would you want to give them over, give over your life to them, to people who would never appreciate you in the first place? Your job, you're replaceable at your job, right? And so we're giving all of ourselves to these corporations, to these people who don't care much about us, thinking that this makes us valuable. When you realize that you're valuable in the first place, you would never put yourselves in those positions. Now let's talk about the L word. You know what word I'm talking about? Lazy. I made a song about it. You're not lazy. You're just tired, right? We as black folk try to avoid the L word like a plague. We try to avoid being lazy. We busy ourselves, you know, growing up. Our parents didn't let us sleep in. We felt like we always had to be doing. And it's really traumatic. It goes back to slavery times, right? Like when we were emancipated, people called us lazy because we didn't want to work for free anymore. For free. And so now this word is being used to shame and make us do things that we don't want to do because we feel like our worth and our value is riding on not being lazy, right? We're praising people who are like booked and busy 24 seven. We're praising people who are like, oh, I don't have time for that. Like, you know, if it's not about money, it don't make sense. It's like, what is happening here? This is just another version of slavery. And you think that you're emancipated, but you're not. 
And then when somebody else wants to rest, wants to opt out of doing for the sake of doing or being busy, we then call them lazy because we don't want to do it either. We think that that leisure and rest is something to be earned when it's not. You don't have to earn that rest. You don't have to earn that leisure. Shout out to the Nat Ministry. Check her out if you don't, because she will literally help you change your mind around rest, around productivity, around hustle culture, grind culture, especially for black folks. So this idea that we always have to be doing, always have to be achieving and striving is not an idea of our own. It's not our idea. It's something that we've adopted because Society has told us that our inherent value doesn't exist. We only value based on how much worth and money we make other people, right? Our enslaved ancestors, we were told, and the truth was that we were only worth as much money that we can make the owner, the plantation owner, right? We were only worth that amount of money. And we've taken that mindset and applied it to today's life. And we are free. We are free to do whatever we want to do. We are free to build a life of more ease, of, of, of more joy, of more rest. And yet we choose to overwhelm and overwork ourselves. Something is not right. Something is wrong in the system. So because words mean things, when we define grind and hustle, let's define lazy, right? Lazy, unwilling to work or use energy, right? So Laziness means that you're unwilling to work or use energy. And so energy is something we're always using. And even when we're sleeping, we're, we're using energy like to regenerate our cells, to breathe, to keep ourselves alive. We burn calories while we're sleeping. So to say that you're not using energy is a lie. You're always using energy. The thing is, you're not using energy on stuff that you don't want to use energy on. That doesn't make you lazy. That makes you intentional. And there's a difference between you just lounging around not doing anything, right? which is totally fine, or you opting out of, you know, doing something that somebody else wants you to do. Because the thing is, the only time that we really call ourselves lazy is because we're worried about what other people think, right? Other people's expectations, other people's rules. But by ourselves, we're alone and we're content and we're happy with where we are. If you only did one thing today or nothing today and you're fine, why does that have to mean that you're lazy? Why can't that mean that you're intentional about resting? We have to change the language that we speak to ourselves with because it really shapes our minds and molds how we think about ourselves and others. Just look at winter, we're in winter right now, right? We could call the season lazy. It's, it's more about resting and, reju and rejuvenating. But the truth is that nothing is really done. Like things are dormant, right? Nothing is dead, nothing has died, nothing has, st has stopped being. Things are dormant because it's conserving energy. And so even nature is being intentional about how to use their energy in the season. And just like in seasons in, in nature, there are seasons in life and we cannot be on 24 seven. We are not evergreen. I don't believe that people are evergreen, like evergreen trees that are always on, right? People work in seasons. Even during the day, there are certain seasons. All my energy is at the beginning of the day. Towards the afternoon, I start being like, okay, I'm done. I don't have nothing else to give. And it's not because I'm lazy. I'm not gonna work till 2 a.m. I'm not doing it. It's not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm intentional and I, and I hold my health and well-being in higher regard than just work for the sake of being busy. Like, it's not the flex you think it is to be like, I'm busy all the time. It's not good. That's not healthy. And so again, with laziness, you're not lazy. You're probably depressed. You're probably exhausted. You might be overwhelmed, but you're not lazy. You're being intentional about where you want to conserve energy and use energy. And that is okay. And the truth is, it actually takes more work to identify where this exhaustion is coming from and remedy that, then just label it with the word lazy. Calling people lazy is a lazy argument. That is lazy. Calling folks lazy and not really addressing the truth, right? Again, procrastination. I was watching this video by Mel Robbins and she was saying, and it really just changed my mind around procrastination. Procrastination is not necessarily bad. It's your body and your mind telling you that it's tired, that it needs a break, right? You can be so overwhelmed with a project or something that you're doing and you're like, dang, I haven't done that today. Maybe you don't need to do that today. Maybe you just need to listen to your mind and your body and be like, you know what? I need a break and it's okay. I'm going to send an email and be like, you know what? I'm sorry. I said I was going to have this done by this date. It's going to take me a little bit more time. And that's honestly what I did on my break. People were emailing me and requesting things of me and I told them and I, and I felt so bad at first. I was like, you know, I'm on vacation. I'm not taking any more emails until the beginning of the year. What was surprising though is that most people understood. <laughs> people understood where I was coming from. They were emailing me on like December 23rd during the holiday season. It's like, I'm with my family and friends. I don't wanna have to, you know, exit out of that situation to come talk to you about business. 
And scarcity mentality will tell you that if you don't address it right now, then it's never going to happen. I'm removing that. Things that are for me will be for me and it will be waiting for me at the top of the year. And most people were very understanding of that. But it's really this pressure we're putting on ourselves. Once we establish boundaries for ourselves, other people honor those boundaries. So what if instead of labeling ourselves as lazy, we chose to be kinder to ourselves, more gentle? Like we say, I'm not lazy, I'm just tired today, right? Or I'm just not feeling it today, or I'd rather do X, Y, and Z than A, B, C. We look at ourselves as, as someone who is worthy and enough, not someone who has to earn worth and value. We would remove the unnecessary labels that the US or the Western culture puts on us, right? We would make money in a joyful way. We would establish what enough money actually is so that we don't have to be a millionaire. We don't have to be a millionaire. Or even for some folks, we don't need, we don't need six figures to live. If we know what enough is, we have a goal, we can work towards that, and anything extra is extra, right? Anything extra is extra, or anything extra is a no thank you because I have enough for that year, right? We would spend more time living, more time being, more time being present in the moment, taking and soaking up everything from today rather than worrying about the future. We'd be less stressed out. We'd be less anxious, less depressed. We would be here in the moment. And again, I feel like a lot of that comes down to determining what enough is so that we're not out here chasing the wind. There's this Chinese proverb that I found on my tea <laughs> and it says that nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. And when I read that, I was like, you know what? You are absolutely correct. It's so true. Nature does not hurry with anything. It takes its time. It takes its time. It roots in the ground. It grows down first before it grows up, right? But as humans, we're so worried about what the external looks like. We're so worried about what other people are going to say, what other people are going to think, right? And we rush along doing things that we're not ready for or things we don't want to do because we feel like we have to hurry up and hustle and grind. And nature does not hurry at all. It takes its time. Yet, Everything is accomplished. The trees go, the grow, the flowers bloom, right? The rain falls, the snow falls. Yesterday we had a snow. Nature takes the time, even with snowfall. It's not like all the snow is dumped out at one time. It's, it falls flake by flake by flake by flake. And it's something marvelous to watch and enjoy. But it's also teaching us something. We're arrogant. We feel like we have to hurry up and hustle and grind because if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. And that's not true. And as a believer, I know that's not true, right? I believe that the only reason why I'm able to do what I'm doing is because of my creator. I know that for a fact. So if I know that for a fact, why am I hustling and grinding? There is a scripture that I read over and over and over again. And it says, and actually, let me, let me read it directly because it's, it's in my cards. Okay. So the scripture is Psalm 127, one and two. It reads, unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. Get this. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. He grants sleep to those he loves, right? And so that's literally countercultural. It's counter everything we've been taught, like to hustle and grind for everything we have. It's telling me that anything I do in my own might won't stand anyway, right? I am only able to do this thing by the grace of God. I know that for a fact. And so I can rest in that fact and know that everything is not coming from me, though I am a vessel for things to come through me. And all I have to do is be available, just like my song getting picked up for that commercial. I could not have planned that. I didn't e email anybody about that. I didn't try to force that to happen. That happened naturally because I was doing what I was supposed to do three years ago, which was just singing a song. It is that simple. <laughs> I was singing a song. I had fun with it. I posted it. Somebody found it three years later and said, you know what? I want to use this girl in the commercial. And what? Like that was the most rewarding experience of this year. And it's not something I could have planned. It's not something that was on my 2021 to do list at all. It just happened. And I'm so grateful that that happened because it humbled me. It showed me that hustle culture and grind culture is a lie. Hustling and grinding leaves you exhausted. It leaves you with nothing. It depletes everything from you, demands everything from you, and leaves you with nothing. Leaves you with illness, with exhaustion, with emptiness, loneliness. People hustle for 10 years and don't have friends. Gary V, for example, talked about how, you know, this one woman who spent a weekend having fun, he said, you know, you had, you spent more time, you spent more time enjoying your life than I spent in my entire 20s combined. What kind of life is that? Who wants that? You don't have no friends. <laughs> you don't have no friends, no family, no support group, no community. Like you've built nothing. All you have is money or clout or esteem. Cause I don't even know if he has money like that, right? Like liquid money. All you have is clout and esteem. I would rather have community and love. 
You know what I mean? I'd rather be of use today than be like 10 years ago. Oh, hey, I know I haven't talked to you in 10 years, but I have a million dollars now. What? <laughs> that sounds so lonely. Anyway, we are arrogant as people. We are arrogant because we think everything comes down to us doing everything, but also we believe the fact that if I grind for 10 years, in 10 years, I'll be successful. And in 10 years, I'll be alive to enjoy the success that I have planted. You don't know how many years you have in front of you. You don't know how much longer you have to live. You don't know how much longer your loved ones have to live. Like, but we live in this very arrogant mindset that tomorrow is promised and it is not. Tomorrow is not promised, right? And we believe that if we suffer long, then at the end we'll be retired and happy. And I know so many older people who are sick. I know so many people who did not make it to their retirement, right? Because we believe this lie that we're fed, that if we hustle and grind for X amount of years, we'll be able to enjoy life at the end of life and live, live in luxury. There are older people on, on, in poverty <laughs> and they gave all of themselves to their job and their, and their work, you know? And I just don't, I don't want you to fall into that trap. The truth is all we have is today, this breath, this moment. <sighs> Take a deep breath. That's all you have. All you have is this moment. You don't have what you think you have in the future. Lord willing, you will, right? But we don't know. And I would rather plant seeds of goodness and fertile ground of joy and, and, and presence and love and generosity instead of hoping and holding on to a hope that one day, then I'll be able to enjoy my life. Then I'll be able to be happy. Then I'll be able to give. Then I'll be able to be present. Accepting ease into my life means that I don't have to have all the answers. I don't have to know what I'm doing all the time. I can take one step at a time and that be enough. And my worth is not wrapped up into what I know and what I've accomplished and who I know and who I'm connected to. It's really about taking things, taking things one step at a time and that being enough. I force myself to face my mortality over break by not being plugged in. I force myself to face my fear of not mattering, of not being impactful, or my fear of not being worth anything unless I do something, right? And I was able to be present and I was able to laugh with my mother. We were able to, you know, read books on the beach and laugh at people at the beach and play in the ocean and, you know, listen to the birds singing and just all of these moments. I even was able to record. I was able to record the sound of the ocean and take back and share with you. I was able to take pictures in the ocean because I was able to be present. And that's something that hustling culture takes away from you. Hustling culture and grind culture takes away the present. It takes away the gift of now, the gift of enoughness, of worthiness, of joy. And I don't want you to be robbed of that anymore. You have an option. You have a choice. You have a choice to choose ease or to grind yourself to a pulp to the end of your life. And I don't want you to waste your life giving something to a system that never gives back, never gives back. And even what you get from grinding and hustling is nothing compared to connection and love and presence and joy and contentment. And I think ultimately that's what everybody wants to be content. People don't want to be poor so they can have options. People want to have options to live the life that they want to live. You're not lazy, right? If you want an easy life, that's what we're all promised. So why are so many people struggling? to get there. I made a video called The American Dream, The, Al the Lie of the American Dream. And I, I hope that you watch that next because it really goes into how we're promised life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And a lot of us are not even able to reach that point. So what did I do during my break? I got my nails done, y'all, because I always wanted to get them done. I rested, I ate good, I slept good. I went to the beach because I love the beach. I decided that I wanna to move to the beach at some point or someplace close to a beach. That's where I feel most, most whole. I sat in a whirlwind of butterflies with my mom and watched her smile at all the different colorful butterflies that flew around us because that is something that she wanted to do for years but never had the time to go. And you know, we were gonna leave early actually and we decided to stay longer because we RV'd down. And we stayed longer, me and my husband, just so my mother could go to the butterfly exhibit. And it was amazing. It was just so, beautiful and it really spoke to this idea of resting and ease. They just flutter along, like they don't worry about anything. People are just like walking among them, being present, seeing the beauty that God created and the beauty that we miss out on so much so in our everyday lives because we're always hustling and bustling and grinding onto the next thing. 
Life is precious. Your life is precious. You are precious. You are not something to be fumbled on the way to a goal. You're not something to be ignored on the way to your goal. Your friends and family are there for you. You're there for them. Don't miss out on these beautiful things, hustling and grinding. So my goal this year, experience more joy, embrace more peace, remain present, listen to myself over the nagging lies of others and culture, right? to take my time and to live slowly. So I ask you, will you come with me into easy living? And how can you make your life easier? In what ways do you make life harder for yourself? In what ways do you not feel enough? I hope that you got something from this video. Um, this was a joy to create. And if you enjoyed this video, watch the next video um, about how American, the American dream is a lie. <laughs> I said straight, just like that. And how we can actually create our own dreams so that we can live a life of abundance, of fruitfulness and joy. And so I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.